guys of hello my name is emma and today i am going to the book signing for chain of gold by cassandra clare happy march 3rd it is chain of gold release day and i could not be more excited for this book to be out into the world i actually finished reading chain of gold like two days prior and i have filmed a spoiler filled reading vlog that you guys are going to be able to watch so that is coming very soon i'm so backlogged on videos that that one has already been posted and this one is two months late enjoy <laughs> i don't even think it's a question that i absolutely adored this book i gave it five out of five stars i'm like so pleased that it's like march 3rd and i already know what my favorite book of the year is but yeah today is the cassie claire signing i think this is probably like my sixth or seventh time that i'm going to meet cassie and i'm just so elated to see her again it's been a hot minute since i've seen cassie i'm only just realizing now but i think i haven't seen her since like 2018 but today is a good day because i'm going to see her again and I get to tell her how much I loved Chain of Gold and just all of my gushy feelings about this new series. So I'm gonna be taking you guys along with me for this book signing and I hope you're looking forward to it. <laughs> I know it's delicious. You can't see it. <laughs> and a whole bunch of stuff and fashion and fashion and beauty. yes we do She's it all such a queen and oh, we are here at the you. chain of gold event yes we're so we're excited so ready. no we're, so ready. we're excited and nervous all at the same time mm -hmm. but it's gonna be a good time so pumped i'm just here so here is here i'm comfy we're ready to go <laughs> my name is virginia costas i come from a long line of shadow Really fun scenes that I enjoyed was so Lucy had. 
has the ability to see ghosts, and one particular ghost in particular that she is fond of, the ghost of a boy named Jesse, and he's in her bedroom talking to her, and no one else can see her, only she, him, only she can see him, so her father comes in and he starts just talking to her like, Who's my little Lucy? Or you took a cute little baby, my little girl. You have such an adorable nose. And Jesse is like hysterical with laughter. And Lucy is like humiliated because her father is doing this stuff to her in front of a boy. But she can't tell him there's a boy there. So I really loved that scene because it was such a fun experience to write Will as a dad. And also the way in which the fact that he is a great dad and a really loving dad is also super annoying. <laughs> Um, I mean, they're very different. Like, one of the things about Lucy and Cordelia is they're very much on opposites attract in a, as friends way. Um, you know, they experience their emotions differently and very express themselves outwardly very differently. Cordelia, like you said, tends to hide her emotions. She just doesn't show her vulnerability. And Lucy is, everything is on the surface. She says everything she thinks at the moment she thinks it. Um, creating chaos everywhere. Um, I think with Cordelia, I have never written a girl who was hopelessly in love before. I've done it before with boys. With girls, it's hard because of the stereotypes people often bring to the idea of a girl who is hopelessly in love as being somehow pitiable, or we should feel sorry for her, or she's doing something that's pathetic. And so with Cordelia, I wanted to show like the bravery and the courage and the strength of being in love with someone that doesn't love you back and you know that, but you have complete, you, but she has it, you know, respect for herself, and she is in no way weaker because of her love. She knows that, you know, love is in and of itself a good thing, and even if this love isn't returned, that's okay. She's a person who has a powerful ability to love. One day she'll love someone else. And so that was what I think I was thinking about when I came to writing Cordelia was how is, you know, like I've done, you know, with, with men, we grant them that strength. You know, we assume that if they are hopelessly in love, that actually cuts against a little bit the way that masculinity is often portrayed, allowing them to have vulnerability and emotions. With women who are considered to be emotional, it was interesting to kind of very kind of try to carefully calibrate this idea that Cordelia feels these feelings that aren't returned, but that that is a thing that makes her stronger and more kick ass. The ducks. Okay. <laughs> the ducks is the, the ducks are a true story, so I'll tell you the true story. You may not believe it, but it's actually happening. Um, so I was in London researching the infernal devices. So I was like going to different places, like, taking photos, kind of trying to get a sense of like weird characters. You know, would be how long would it take to walk from point A to point B. And I was with my friend Sarah, and we wanted to to pick up some food and go have a picnic in the park. So we went and we bought some food. We bought like, in the English are big on pies, which are not like what we think of as pie, but are like these little pastries that are stuffed with like meat and cheese and stuff like that. So we got a bunch of those. We go to the park and we start, and all these ducks start surrounding us. <laughs> and we're like, all right. So we're like throwing the pieces of, of, of pie. And suddenly Sarah like makes a face of horror and she's like, Wait, these are duck pies. We're feeding duck ducks. <laughs> these ducks are cannibals. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, this, you're right. So I was like, okay, well, we're just gotta go. You know, like, never speak of this girl again. And we like put our stuff away. We start leaving the park, and the ducks start chasing us. <laughs> we're like this. The ducks are like, and we're like, and the ducks are like, yeah. So we like ran out of my park with these ducks honking after us. And after that, I really had very unkind feelings about ducks. <laughs> and I wrote them into Park Archangel, where Will is like, never trusted it. <laughs> That's where it comes from. And thank you guys so much. I wish we could answer every question. Got a copyright claim, I know this copper's so lame YouTube is who you should blame, back to the video You caught the last take of 20 
Uh, say so nine. takes. 29. Nine. <laughs> that no, was not just, nine. Mm, just babe. nine. Just nine. Look who I'm with. Michael, my best friend Michael from Michael Buckline. Oh, was that my YouTube channel? Yes. Oof. Remember How'd uploading mm -hmm. frequently? I do. How was your night at the Chain of Gold event? I had an amazing time. Everyone keeps asking me, and I'm like, what, why are you even asking? Like, I've had the best day ever being we, here with Can Tennessee. you insert the clip of me recording you just like yes. cheesing so hard? Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, it was um, very nice. You got to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, you got to meet Cassie for the... Yeah. How many times have you met this her now? This is probably like the 16th. seventh. No, not oh. that many. Seventh or <laughs> oh, eighth, maybe. A bit. But yeah, she's such a sweetie. She was like... You're, what did she call me? A, a bell bringer? It's like a, a whistleblower. Not a whistleblower. A bell whistle. Is it a bell whistle? No. There's a term. Okay, I don't remember what the word Cassie called me was, but she was essentially like, I know if Emma likes it, that like other people are gonna like it too. And that was like genuinely one of the sweetest things that she could have ever said to me. You're such a sweetie. And she looked beautiful. She was wearing this like Victorian. 19 Edwardian era Edwardian. costume dress. It was so beautiful. And the hair was done up to oh, match. Oh, her hair, too. it was gorgeous. She always looks stunning. Emma, did you tell them you're matching the book? Oh, I don't think I actually mentioned that, yes. I I have my my mint green dress and then my like orange burnt colored eye makeup. I went for Shadow, Shadow Hunter, Hunter who can also show Go up to, to work. work looking like this. <laughs> so it was such a good time and I got to meet so many people and say hello and it's just been an absolute blast. delusionally tired but I never finish vlogs on like the night that I'm supposed to so I'm forcing myself to conclude this vlog now. I had such a lovely day at the Classy Claire event. I got to get lunch with a friend and then I got dessert with Natalia and then I got to hang out with Michael and meet a ton of new people at the Cassie Claire event and then also see people who like I've met before at other events. I had such a lovely day at the Chain of Gold signing. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but like I got lunch first with a friend and then Natalia and I went to Grey Street for dessert, which is like our favorite thing to do. I got to hang out with Michael. I got to meet some new people who watch my channel and love Cassie's books as much as I do, which is always exciting. And see people that I've like been seeing for years at Cassie's events. I had such a lovely time chatting with Cassie again. She's truly just like the most magnificent woman in the world. And I'm really grateful to have met her as many times as I have. I could go on forever about the endless amazing things that have happened to me because of BookTube. But the relationship I have with Cassie is one that is like really, really special. And I think there are like few things in my lifetime that will ever top the way that I've gotten to know my favorite author. She was telling me how much she appreciates like the support that I have been in her professional career. And she congratulated me on like the steps that I have been making in my career. She is truly just one of the kindest and most down to earth people I've ever met. There are like so few people that can have her level of talent and fame and recognition and like have them still treat you as an equal. And that's something that Cassie has done since I met her when I was first 18. She's just amazing. I'm so happy for all of the success she's garnered over the years and the amazing fans that she has. This is my final copy of Chain of Gold. It's gorgeous. It says, for Emma, Cassie Claire on it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I'm really excited to have it and to place it on one of my many Shadowhunter shelves. 
I feel like none of you are actually going to believe this, but Chain of Gold is technically the first book that I bought in 2020. I bought that one. I also have the Waterstones Collector's Edition coming, which I'm really excited for. But I decided to buy another book while I was at Barnes & Noble today, and that is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert, who is the author of Eat, Pray, Love. Now, I read Eat, Pray, Love, and I really enjoyed it. I've been interested in reading more of Elizabeth Gilbert stuff, but this is the first fiction that I will be picking up from her. What I gather from the story is that it's about a girl who moved to New York when she was 19 and she got caught up in like this very elaborate glamorous world and had like a mistake that sort of affected her career and so now she is like in her 80s and telling her story for the first time. Lately I have just been feeling really inclined to pick up more adult books and I definitely am not as well versed in the adult worlds as I am with YA, but this is one that I've been like really struck by and I think I'm going to enjoy it. So that concludes my vlog from the Chain of Gold signing. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you're reading Chain of Gold or if you've read Chain of Gold, I would love to hear your thoughts. And I of course have like lots more Chain of Gold's content coming. If you want to watch some of my other Shadow Under videos, I'll leave those in the link below. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon for a new one. Bye.